Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, it's Topaz Studio 2, our creative toolbox. I love Topaz Studio 2, as you know. I thought today we'd work on a still life image. This is going to be a fun one, not going to be that hard to do. Uh, I got my artist hat on, so I'm ready to roll. I hope you are too. I will leave links in the description below so you can download this image in case you want to try this along with me. So without further ado, let's get painting. I'm working from Photoshop today, but you could use uh, Topaz Studio 2 as a standalone piece of software to do this as well. But uh, this is the way I'm doing it, and either way it's going to work out the same. So let's go to Filter. I'm going to come down to Topaz Studio 2 and launch Topaz Studio 2, and we'll get started here. Now, the first thing I did here was added a glow filter. I'm really loving this glow filter. I love what it does for making, like, lines in your image and, you know, makes things look a little bolder and stand out. Let's show you what I mean here. So I'm going to take the uh, primary glow strength and pull it up. But first off, note that I have it in the dark mode. All right, so I'm going to take the primary glow strength and pull that up. Now, it looks kind of blurry here, but don't worry. We're going to take the effect sharpness and pull it way up a good bit here. And then we're going to take this primary electrify, and we're going to pull it up a good bit here. We don't want to go too crazy because it'll go nuts. But somewhere right around here. But see the nice lines you get around here? Look at these walnuts here. And these are, uh, I guess, chestnuts maybe. Uh, but look how cool that looks already, just with the uh, glow filter. And let's see here. And I want to pull up the sharpness a little bit more. Yeah, maybe just a, maybe just a little bit more. And am I satisfied with the electrify? Now we could take the opacity if we felt that was too strong, and maybe pull that back a little bit. And we might do that, just just something like that. But I love what's happening here with the lines and the texture and this wood surface here, and on these leaves here, it's looking pretty cool. So that's our first step. The next step is to jump right into Impression. So come up to Add Filter, find Impression, open that up. And I believe I used uh, the first brush. I experimented and tried different brushes. So I really recommend that you try out the different brushes, okay? But I think I used the first brush. And I had the number of strokes on high. So let's put that on high. And now we're going to play with the uh, paint volume here. So I'm going to turn up the paint volume, because when you turn these uh, paint volume and uh, brush volumes up, you get more of that painterly look when you do that in the opacity. See how it looks more painterly when I do that? Something like that. Then the next thing I'll do is I, I generally look at the stroke rotation, play with that a little bit. See, so you can get it where it looks, you know, it's horrible unless that's the look you're looking for. But for me, I think it looks horrible. So anyway... But right around there, I think looks good. I'm just moving a little bit like 0.02. And then you can do a rotation variation if you wanted to. And I don't think I'm going to do that. But play with these things. There's also a color, stroke color variation if you want to add some color to it. But don't think so for this particular image. But always experiment and play around with that stuff. Now stroke width. This is the width of the stroke. See when I move it to the right, it makes the paint wider. And it tends to get a little softer. So, and if you move it to the left, you get more of this type of a, of a stroke look, a very thin stroke. And I think I use a smaller stroke here. And I've showed you this in the past, but you want to come down to texture and make sure you have your texture, uh, your background type set to original. And I'll show you if you don't what happens. Because if you pull this, um, where was I at? Stroke width back like this. So you start seeing the canvas showing through, the white of the canvas showing through. So by clicking on original here, that goes away. And that just gives you, like, even like right there, it just gives you a nice, soft, painterly look. And I, and I kind of like that there, but I think I want to make the width a little bit wider. Something like, eh, maybe somewhere right around in there. Now I can always come back to this glow right here. Because these uh, filters interact with each other, which is really cool. And see, I can take that glow strength and pull it up more if I wanted to, or pull it back. Whatever we want. We can retweak it, pull up the Electrify, and see how we can just play with it. And look how I'm bringing out the, just these, uh, you know, the lines, the dark lines and the walnuts and things. And that's looking really cool. So don't forget, you can always come back and play with these filters. They interact with each other, which is really nice. So, let's see. 
do I want to take this opacity back a little bit more? I don't know. It's it's looking pretty good actually. I'm just gonna go with it. I like I really like that look. And these paintings never come out the same twice. Okay, so whoops, I gotta go back to the impression filter. Let's play around with it some more. Okay, so we're down, we were down to the stroke width. Now let's play with the stroke length. So we can make that length strong. You see how it, the paint starts to splash out around there? And that looks kind of nice. And it, if you like that look, go ahead and do it. But make it your own. I'm going to pull mine, pull mine in, I think, right around there. And that looks cool. And then we have a spill here. We can, if you want the paint to spill out a little bit, you can do that. Or you can pull it back and not have any spill on it whatsoever. But maybe... Maybe just a little tiny bit of spill looks pretty good, I think. Okay, now here's one of my very favorite uh, sliders. Don't forget this one, Painting Progress. Check this out. When you start to pull this back, see how the painting changes? Because it, in other words, it it's like a more primitive painting when it's to the very left like this. But sometimes that looks cool. And I actually kind of like that. I think that looks really nice. Uh, see how the brushes look a little more abstract. So play with this painting progress. It is awesome. And you might find a spot that you really enjoy. Like, I'm thinking right there. Look at these nice strokes here. It's really beautiful, and I like that. And then, of course, we can play with the color and the lighting. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to go on to another filter. Before I go on to the next filter, I just want to check the uh, brush size here. I didn't play with that, I don't think. So let me move that brush size up and see how you can really change the image when you just adjust the brush size. And I was, I think I was right at 50, somewhere right around in there, right? So I can make the brush size smaller. So again, play with that brush size too. All these things are very important. And I'm just looking at it and saying, thinking, where do I really like it? And I like it. I'm thinking right I'm really carefully studying the images as I do this you could probably see it in my eyes right there I like it right there now on to the next filter hey before I go to the next filter I wanted to show you you might notice that my can canvas is a different color I don't know if you know this but you can come up here to file and uh, Topa go under Topaz Studio preferences and you can come here background color you can reset it to the original or you could come here and change it to any color that you like. So I just wanted to point that out. Because I have black in this background here and I wanted to keep it separate from the canvas. It just helps. So I just thought I'd point that out. Okay, my next filter is going to be, and this is a really good tip, after you do painting or anything, and I probably mentioned this in other videos, is to go to either precision, contrast, or detail. I'm going to use contrast this time. You can use either one, but uh, contrast is pops a little more contrast in areas here so like micro contrast it really brings out like the paint strokes you see that which is a really nice feature so I might bring and I love Topaz Studio too and their their controls are very aggressive so you can really pop out some detail here so maybe something like that looks pretty cool and then I'll play with the low and see what that does just adjust it to where it looks good I really love what's happening on these walnuts here and on the pomegranate too and let's play with the medium or you could go negative with it if you wanted to and I think I'll just leave that one I'm gonna double click medium and get it back to the uh, default position and let's try the high up. you know I might just take the high up just a little bit it just enriches the uh, the the shadows a little bit so maybe somewhere right around there now let's click this eyeball here so you can see the before and the after see how that really pops some nice detail out and you see the paint strokes real nice showing through before I go to that next filter I want to come back to impression because I want to show you something here uh, you can come down to texture and if you this is a painting right so if you want to add a little bit of uh, canvas texture you could come down here and let's just pick a like canvas one here and click this I'm going to zoom in so you can see it here. I'm going to pull up the texture strength. And you can also adjust the size of that texture. So, but something like that. You can add a little bit of uh, canvas texture to give it a more authentic painting look. Um, but if you're going to print this on a, uh, on like a canvas 
that print it on canvas, then I would recommend do not put a texture on it, okay? Because you're kind of defeating the purpose. Wouldn't make any sense. But if you're going to put it online, show it on social media or whatever, or just print it out in a, in a print or whatever, but not on canvas, you could add some texture because it, it gives it that uh, painterly look. So I highly recommend that. I'm going to leave that on here for now. And I just wanted to point that out. The next step is going to be adding another filter. And I this is a very good step too. Go to your HSL color tuning and you can kind of tweak your colors up here a little bit. Like you can adjust the overall saturation here. So in this, uh, you'll see this first little icon here with all the colors in here is, is selected right here. So we can adjust the overall hue, which I really wouldn't do on this one, I don't think, but maybe. I'm going to double click you, get it back. But you could take the overall saturation down or bring it up if you wanted more saturation, depending what you want. And remember, these Topaz controls are very aggressive. So yeah, I, for now, I'm just going to leave it in the center, double click uh, overall saturation. But here's the point I wanted to point out. Go through each one of these colors. You notice when I hover over color, you see those red lines in there. That's showing me that I'm picking the red tones right there. So let me click on that. And now when I adjust the red saturation, see it's only going to affect red, so I could pull it off the reds or give the reds a little more saturation. This is a good way to fine tune your image to get it looking just the way that you like it. And you can even play with the hue a little bit, shift it one way or the other, getting it to the perfect color combination here. And maybe something right around there. And let's see, how about a little more saturation? Maybe just a little bit of saturation. Then you can adjust the lightness of the reds too. See, so you can pull those reds up or darken them down. So you got a lot of flexibility here. You can do a lot with this. Getting this uh, painting to look just the way you like it. That might be a little too much. Maybe right around there. And I, I just go through and hit all these colors. And I might adjust the hue one way or the other and just see what it's doing. And remember, you can always double click. Uh, like, for instance, orange hue, double click here. And it goes back to the center. So you can just play with that and, you know, tweak it and get it looking just the way you want it. And again, you can give it more saturation or less saturation, depending what mood you're in. I'm going to double click saturation, orange saturation to get it back. We can adjust the lightness of it, brighten it up or darken it up, depending, again, what mood you want your image to go into. I'm just going to leave it where it was. And now I'm going to go to the next color, which is yellow. And we can, let's pull the saturation up in that and you can see where that's being affected. So I'm going to double click here and then I'm just going to shift the hue a little bit and just see if I can tweak it a little bit. Maybe right there. Now let's play with its lightness. Make it lighter or darker. Might make it just a little bit lighter. And I mean, I mean a little bit, not a lot. And now let's go to green. There's not going to be any green in here. So here's another little trick. You can take the green lightness and just pull it up the whole way. That way you can really see if there's any green in there. Whatever goes light would be green areas. But in this case, if I wanted this to go lighter right here, which I might, I could pull that up a little bit, which is nice. But I highly recommend coming into HSL and playing with every one of these. And again, I'll use the lightness just to kind of detect where that color is. And again, when I hover over, you don't see any of the little red lines, so you can tell there's none of these colors. And there, there's a little bit of blue here. So let's pull the blue up. Yeah, you can see it on this chestnut down here. So if I want to darken that area or lighten that area, I can do it. Or if I don't like that little bit of blue tint that's in there, I'm going to double click blue lightness. I could take that saturation and just kind of pull it back a little bit. Or I could shift its hue a little bit one way or the other. Uh, maybe, maybe somewhere, somewhere right around there, maybe. Might pull its lightness back a little. It is a hot, that is a highlight spot on there. So, but you get a lot of nice uh, tweaking ability here. Let's go to purple. Oh, there's purple in there too. And look, I'm going to take that purple down a little bit, the lightness anyway of it. And I might just take its saturation down a little bit too. Get some of that purple out of there. I don't mind a little bit of that in there. It looks kind of cool. And let's go to our last color. This is going to affect the pomegranate. Let's shift the hue on that and see what happens. And that's right, it's right around in here, so I'm not liking what's happening there. What about the saturation? See, if we want to throw some nice pink into our pomegranate, we can do it. 
And, you know, it might give it an artistic flair, but I don't like it. So I'm going to double click uh, Magenta Saturation. And again, I can play with its lightness. I can darken that area or lighten that area up. And I might just lighten that area up a little bit. So I'm just playing here, tweaking. But I'll tell you, these are the nice little steps that you can do just to, you know, to really fine tune your image. Now, if I click on the canvas right here, left click with my mouse and hold it in, you can see there's a before and there's a after. So I'm thinking it's looking really nice. Now, let me try one last thing. And I'm just playing now. I'm going to go to Add Filter. Now I'm going to go to Precision Detail. Remember, I use Contrast. I'm going to go to Precision Detail. And let's just see what happens if I bring up my overall small details. It'll make my uh, make that canvas pop through a little bit more. So I might do that. And there's a boost here, too, that you can really boost it up if you want. And you can get a whole another look to your image, right? So experimentation is the key. You might say, I like that look. And I kind of do like it. But for now, I'm going to double click overall small detail and get it back let's play with the medium and the key here is play seriously now I don't want to make it, it is a painting I don't want it to make it too too detailed but I just like that little bit of extra detail in there and if I felt I got too much I can take this opacity pull it off and maybe just maybe just pop a little bit of that in there right there and I think we're done now if we're all said and done here uh, all we have to do, I I'm, remember I'm in Photoshop, I'm just going to click Accept, and that'll bring me right back into Photoshop. And so here's my before, and here's my after. Pretty cool, right? Now, if you wanted to in Photoshop here, you could take this opacity and pull it back and let a little bit of the original image show through if you wanted to. I mean, so that that's that's nice to do too, and that's sometimes really looks cool, really looks cool when you do that. So, but... I'm happy with it up the whole way, I think. You know what? I might pull it back just a, at, you know, to like 90% there. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. Well, there's a really cool still life. A nice pomegranate with some walnuts and some chestnuts and some leaves. Pretty fun image. Um, I am leaving a link in the description below, as I said earlier. So in case you want to download this image and try this out for yourself, I want to give a shout out to Jack Torcello because on my last video, he watched it and he enjoyed the video and he even made a preset that you can go on the Facebook uh, uh, users group or not. the Yeah, the Facebook Topaz users group. And uh, I believe you can still download the preset he made from the last video that I did. He he made a preset after watching the video. So that was really cool. Thanks, Jack. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video today and give this one a try. Uh, get that camera out and take some still life shots and practice and make some beautiful art that you can hang on your wall or sell. It's really cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. Uh, if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new uh, tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I appreciate each and every one of you for liking and sharing and subscribing. Thank you all so very much. I'll see each and every one of you right here next time in the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. But until then, remember this, happy editing.